So uh, my presentation is titled uh, The Youth Meet in the Philippines, uh, Profile and Barriers to Training Participation. Uh, it is based on a discussion paper titled Who Are the Youth Meet in the Philippines Today, which I co-authored with uh, Dr. Aniceto Orbeta, PIBS President, and Nina Araos, who was a former research analyst at PIBS. So before I begin my presentation, let me say a few words about this paper. So we wrote this paper around March to April 2021, and it was published as a discussion paper in August of 2021. So this paper and the data that we used in it are a bit dated, and we haven't updated the paper. So please keep that in mind. And also, this is one of the two papers on youth need and uh, TVET that we wrote for TESDA and TBED, the Philippine Business for Education, which is part of their broader initiative to make uh, training programs more relevant for disadvantaged youth in the Philippines. So we'd like to acknowledge them for the support that we received for the study. Next slide. Okay, so uh, first of all, who are the youth NEET and why is it important to study them? So NEET stands for uh, youth, meaning people who are aged uh, 15 to 24, who are not in employment, education, or training. So um, NEET are an important subgroup, subgroup of the youth because these, in these ages, in these ages uh, we would normally expect the youth to be in school. Uh, either in high school or in college, or they could be uh, taking technical vocational training, or they can be employed since these are the ages when people normally transition from attending school to working. But the need, the need are youth who are not doing any of these. So meaning these, these youth are transitioning to adulthood, but they are not accumulating the human capital, meaning uh, knowledge, skills, and experience which they need to become uh, productive adults. So because the need are uh, entering adulthood without uh, or lacking the skills and knowledge and experience, this can impair their uh, prospects of, of finding a good job or a decent or earning a decent uh, living. And uh, this can in turn have a lasting impact, a lasting negative impact on their uh, socioeconomic situation. So uh, one of the key policy questions that arises is what are the strategies that uh, we can pursue in order to engage the need? So from the perspective of our partners in the study, TESDA and PBED, uh, TVET or uh, Technical Vocational Education and Training uh, can play an important role in um, engaging the Filipino need because TVET can provide a... Uh, an alternative pathway for, for the youth to gain knowledge and skills, which can uh, they then uh, uh, use to secure employment. So it is important for us to think about how we can encourage need or help the need to participate in, in Tibet. Uh, next slide. Okay, so our paper actually has five research questions, but because of the limited time, this presentation is only going to focus on two of them. So the first one is, who are the NEET in the Philippines? So here we aim to give a profile of the NEET. And the second one is, what are the barriers that keep NEET from pursuing technical vocational education and training, or TVET? Next slide. Okay, so to answer the uh, first research question, we performed a simple analysis of household survey data, particularly the uh, 2019 rounds of the labor force survey and we also use the merged uh, labor force survey and family income and expenditure survey from 2018. And to answer the second question, we uh, collected data through an online survey of former NEET who were training or applying for a program at TESDA or uh, Youth Works PH. Youth Works PH is a, a project of PBED and the USAID, which is basically a training scholarship with uh, that's targeted for 
or targeted towards uh, neat youth in uh, in selected areas in the country. Next slide. Okay, so first we discuss the profile of the Filipino need. Next slide. Uh, so uh, the need are commonly measured using labor force surveys. And in the Philippines, um, the PSA, the Philippine Statistics Authority, has been publishing need statistics uh, since uh, 2019 using data collected from its, from its LFS. So to measure the need, we only need four variables. First is age, uh, that's to determine who the youth are. And then uh, the employment variable to determine whether the youth are employed or not. So if a person is uh, not employed, they could either be unemployed, meaning uh, they don't have a job, but they're looking for a job, or they can be uh, economically inactive, meaning they don't have a job, but they're not looking for a job. Uh, next is an education variable to determine if uh, the youth are attending school. So normally for these ages, they would be attending secondary or tertiary education. And then finally, you need a training variable to determine if they are participating in a technical or vocational training. Next slide. Okay, so this uh, graph shows uh, the, PS, the PSA's estimates of the need population and the need incidents from 2019 to April uh, to 2022. Uh, so the need incidents is the share of uh, Filipino youth who are neat. So that is represented by the orange markers in this graph, which are connected by the by the orange line. And the blue bars represent the neat population. So as of April 2022, there were about uh, 2.38 million neat in the Philippines, which is about our youth population. So in terms of trends, uh, we can see here that the need incidents and the need population were trending downward before the pandemic. Uh, but you can see that uh, both of them significantly increased in the middle of uh, 2020 at the height of the uh, pandemic-related lockdowns. Uh, but since 2020, we see that the, the, the need population and the need incidents have been trending downward again. You can see, you can probably see in the graph that there's a huge drop in the need population in July 2020, which is very puzzling because uh, the conditions at the time would not, could not have supported such a big decline in the need population. So we do not uh, put too much weight on that uh, data point. Next slide. Okay, so in this slide, we show the neat incidence or the prevalence of being neat among uh, different subgroups of the youth. So geographically, out of the country's 17 regions, BARM has the highest neat incidence at 27%. And it's followed by the Dava region and Mimaropa at 20%. And Zambanga Peninsula and Central Luzon at 19%. Uh, in terms of sex, females are more likely to be neat. So 24% uh, of the female youth are neat compared to just compared to just 14% among among male youth. And that uh, rate is even higher among females aged 20 to 24. The, the neat incidence among them is 40%. And it's even higher among uh, young married females. So among young married females, the need incidence is 67 percent. In terms of urbanization, need incidence in rural, area, rural areas and urban areas are roughly the same. So it's 19 percent in rural areas and 18 percent in urban areas. And in terms of family income, uh, need incidence is generally higher among youth who belong to lower income or poorer families. So 23% of the youth in the bottom half of the income distribution are neat compared to just 11% among the youth who belong to 
the top 20% of families. Next slide. So here we show uh, the composition or the profile of Filipino need in terms of different characteristics. So in terms of age, the overwhelming majority of need are age 20 to 24, 69%. And also, the large majority of them are female. So 63% or nearly two-thirds of the Filipino need are female. Uh, in terms of education, 43% have a lower secondary education. And uh, just over half of them, half, over half of the need, 56%, uh, live in rural areas. And finally, in terms of income, 56% uh, of the need come from the poorest, 40% of families in terms of income. Next slide. All right, so when we look at the economic status of the need, we see that most of them are actually economically inactive or out of the labor force. So we find that uh, seventy-four percent of the need are inactive or are not participating in the labor force, and uh, actually fifty-two percent or over half of the need population consists of females who are economically inactive. And then uh, among the econo economically inactive need, uh, we find that the main reason for being out of the labor force or economically inactive is home care. So 45% say that 45% of the economically inactive say that the reason for their inactivity is home care or family duties. And then finally, we find that over 60% of female need who are economically inactive are married. So this seems to say that uh, marriage and family formation have a lot to do with why female need um, are not participating in the labor force. Next slide. So next we discuss the barriers that keep need, uh, keep the Filipino need from pursuing to death. Next slide. So we answer this question by means of an online survey. Uh, so the target respondents of this survey were current trainees and applicants in TESDA Technology Institutes or TTIs and current trainees and applicants in YouthWorks PH, the PPED and USAID program. Um, so in terms of eligibility, anyone among these respondents or target respondents were eligible for the survey or to take the survey as long as they were neat at the time of their application to their respective programs. So uh, the way we collected our responses was uh, we asked TESDA and YouthWorks to, to advertise the survey and to promote it uh, among their constituents. And we asked them to collect as many respondents as they can. So our survey is self-selected, meaning anyone who was uh, who was willing to participate in it could uh, answer the survey as long as they were eligible. And this means that uh, we have a non-random and non-probability sampling method and our sample is not representative of the need population or even the need population of, of TTIs and the Youth Works program. So this means that um, that's one of the limitations of this uh, uh, methodology is that uh, findings from this online survey are not generalizable, but uh, even so, we think that um, the results that we got are informative. So uh, we conducted our survey in March 2021, and uh, um, the usable sample size that we achieved is uh, 1,688. And most of them, 61%, were trainees in TESDA Technology Institutes. Next slide. All right, so 
we ask the respondents to name factors that kept them from pursuing TVET uh, before they applied for uh, the training program. So, and then we allowed them to name more than more than one factor. So these are the top responses. So the top reason is uh, financial. So 48% said that the reason why they didn't pursue TVET before was that uh, they lacked funds for tuition or allowance. And that is followed by the lack of information at 13%. Uh, household or caring duties at 11% and working or seeking work at 10%. And then 36% uh, said that they didn't experience any hindrance. Next slide. So we also asked our respondents about what they thought were the types of, su of support that uh, youth need in order to encourage them to pursue TVET. And uh, these are the top responses that I gave. So two of the top five uh, responses were financial in nature. So 58%, which is the top response, said allowance support. And then 48% said vision support. That is the third highest response. And then the two other of the top five were uh, about information. So 56% mentioned information about jobs. And then 39% uh, said uh, information on TVET programs. And then the last one is uh, job search support or uh, assistance in looking for employment at 47%. Next slide. So, uh, next slide. So, what did we learn from uh, from our study? So, in terms of the profile of the need, so we saw that uh, need incidence is highest in BARM, and it's followed by Davao Region, Mimaropa, uh, Zamboanga Peninsula, and Central Luzon. We also found that uh, need are mostly female and they tend to come from poor families. And NEET are also mostly economically inactive. And the primary reason for inactivity being uh, home care and family duties. Next slide. So in terms of the barriers uh, to pursuing TVET, uh, we found through our online survey that uh, financial constraints were the main barrier. Uh, that hindered them from, uh, from pursuing Tibet. And this was followed by the lack of information and housework. And then uh, through the survey, we also found that financial support, uh, meaning tuition and allowance support, and information on jobs and Tibet programs can help uh, encourage training participation among the youth. So again, uh, Although our survey findings are not generalizable, they are nonetheless still uh, useful. So next slide. So in terms of our recommendations, the first one is to conduct more in-depth studies on the determinants of being neat, including the high level of inactivity among female neat, in order to identify policies to draw them into training or employment. And then finally, uh, to encourage TVET participation among NEET through financial support, information dissemination, and uh, employment facilitation assistance. Okay, so that is all. Uh, thank you very much.